What is up guys? My name is Mark Samaria. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the RC Vlog. Guys, I know I kind of dropped the ball on the release of the Arma Vortex. I didn't really get content out really quick. So today we're going to unbox it, but we're not just going to unbox it. We're going to compare it to the Rustler 4x4 VXL because I actually had a plan to build out my ultimate Rustler 4x4 VXL. So I got a brand new one box still. So we're going to do a comparison side by side between the Rustler VXL 4x4 and the Vortex BLX3S, I think that's what they call it. I think that's what it is. It is. It is a 3S BLX, the Arma Vortex. 3. So basically, they're both four-wheel drive stadium trucks. There's another four-wheel drive stadium truck that's made for the track, the Techno one. I have to mention that one because that's my favorite one for the track. But these two are like basher ones. And they're in the same class. So what I kind of see playing out when someone goes in the hobby shop and looking for one of these is they do one of these things. Ooh, wow, that car looks cool. What is that? Uh, sir, that's a four-wheel drive brushless stadium truck. Well, there's two of them. Which one do I pick? What's the difference? Really, there's not much of a difference. One is Arma and one is Traxxas. So we're going to bust these jokers open, set them up side by side, and look at the differences. We're not going to drive them in this video. We'll drive them in the next video. But basically, the Vortex content is going to be mixed in with some wrestler content because those are the two main competitors right now in this, in this little area. All right, so you guys are getting two unboxings in this video, which is pretty cool. So we're gonna open the rest of 4x4 up first because nothing super glam about this. I've already opened this one. The only thing cool about this one is I did get the limited edition Traxxas exclusive blue. Can you see that? Yeah, you can see that, which, oh man, looks so good. Whew, I don't even know if I wanna run this body. I might get, what I really wanted, to, actually, you know what? I'll, I'll tell you what I wanted to do after you want to see what's in the box you get the remote and then some shock limiters like a battery foam and some small hand tools again the hand tools are useful if you don't have any tools not so useful if you plan on doing a lot of wrenching okay so now let's open this beast this is the vortex 4x4 3s blx i am so excited to drive this thing oh man oh wow Dang, um, oh, okay, so this color, this co the color they sent me, absolutely sick. Check this thing out. Oh, dang, it is the pink and purple. Oh. So what I wanted to do is I want to get the pink and purple Rustler body. Then we could do like side-by-side -side comparisons with the same color scheme. But I, the Traxxas store didn't have any. So I want to kind of save this body because this is a limited edition body, but... Oh man, looks so freaking good. Let's peel this plastic off. You ready? Oh, so clean. Oh man, that looks good. Let me give you guys some close-up shots real quick. Let's see what's in the box of the Vortex. Is it Vor it's Vortex, right? Yeah, Vortex. It sounds like I'm putting an X on the end. Weird. All right. You have the remote, which, wait a second. Wait a second. I think this is an upgrade. I think this is an upgrade, guys. The reason why I think this is an upgrade because I think this remote has the receiver that you can bind to the other spectrum, the other spectrum line. So I know the Sentin, you could not bind the Sentin up with the like a DX3C. Um, this is a this is a game changer. This means that you can bind and drive this one with your other remote that you already have or another Spectrum remote you already have so long you can handle multiple models. But this is the same remote that comes with the, the at least I think, I'm pretty sure, but I think that you can do that. But this is the same remote that comes with the LMT, which I know I can do that with my LMT. So, And then in here it comes with some extra gears and some tools, like maybe a high-speed gear and some tools and then some shock limiters. Um, but yeah, pretty standard. Both come with about the same things. They don't come with a battery or charger, but man, they look so good. 
All right, so here they are side by side. So the first thing I noticed when I saw the box, it looks like, actually, let me show this side of the box. This side of the box is kind of at the same angle. Oh, come on, Mark, you got this. You gotta believe, you gotta believe. All right, there. All right, so look, so these are kind of the same angles, right? It looks like the Vortex is a little bit taller, like higher off the ground than the Russell 4x4. So that was the first thing I wanted to check by pulling them out of the box. So here they are side by side. Let's get them like, I mean, slightly. The tires are slightly bigger. The body is slightly higher. Uh, so it does look like it's a little bit higher um, in regards to ground clearance. Um, yeah, I guess the Vortex has a little bit more ground clearance, but obviously you can just change that with ride height. Uh, but the, the actual wheelbase looks pretty freaking similar. Um, let's put them front to back, see which if one's wider or not. No, the width looks the same. So ge the actual geometry of these cars are very, very similar in regards to the dimensions. Um, uh, it's probably just body on why the, the Vortex looks a little bit higher. Again, you can adjust ride height. Let's take the bodies off. All right, so me and Ethan just got done. The, the, the single clip body, the quick release body is actually pretty cool. Me and Ethan were having trouble getting that rear body clip off, which is why that's pretty cool. But here, let's take the bodies off. Um, so before we dig into these cars, uh, one of the questions and a deciding factor on getting one of these cars is price. So the Rustler VXL 4x4 is fi about $50 more expensive than the Vortex uh, 3S BLX. So I believe these are two, $379 and these go for about $429. Now with that said, I did a comparison with the, and I know these aren't the same cars, with the Set and the Slash 4x4. The Slash 4x4 came with TSM, which made it a lot easier to drive. I don't believe this car comes with a, oh, actually, Actually, I think it does. It comes with AVC, which is very similar to, uh, to TSM. So I, we're gonna find out how different they are. Okay, so let's look at them up close here. Again, it looks very similar to the power systems. I keep saying again. It looks very similar to the power systems in the Seton 4x4 and the Granite 4x4 to 3S BLX, which makes sense because it's the same power system it's a 3l blx um, again the standard vxl that you get in all the traxxas cars in the rustler 4x4 so side by side it looks like there's a little bit more plastic a little more beef and there's like these coverings on the side here and um, this one looks a little bit lower which might make it a little bit better and easier to drive easier to drive just because of lower center of gravity well nothing crazy alarming i've seen both these platforms before in other cars um, I say that because the Slash 4x4 is very similar to this, so is the Haas. And the Sentin 4x4 and the Granite are very similar to this. So, nothing crazy different. I don't remember seeing all that metal back there. Hmm, is that normal? Maybe I just missed it on my Sentin. Um, shocks. Looks like these shocks may be a little bit bigger bore than the Rustler 4x4. However, the interesting thing about these shocks is the shaft and the shock bottoms are one piece. I, I will do a review on all this stuff and kind of give you my two cents after I actually, because I've never even broken down the Arma shocks yet. I've broken down the Traxxas shocks. I'm super comfortable with them, so I know how that works. Um, not bad shocks though, but I am going to take those off, by the way, and put some GTRs because I think GTR shocks are cool. So this one comes with the IC5 connector. Comes with the Traxxas 3S connector. Both of them have that smart, I'm not gonna say smart, but that intelligent technology where it can basically plug in and then you can plug your battery in and charge at the right rate every time. So both have some type of safety in the LiPo whenever you run a LiPo or run a, run a battery on these things. You will definitely wanna run LiPo on these cars since they are brushless. But yeah, man, I'm excited to just go drive these things. Let's give you another close up of this thing. Man, you know what? I, okay, so one thing I don't, I'm not a huge fan of are these battery straps. Man, I, especially in the Outcast 8S, I have a hard time getting to it. The good thing about them though is, 
you can run any type of battery. You don't have to worry about battery sizes. So there is an advantage to battery straps, uh, but for a guy like me who runs the same, like the battery that's intended for the car, eh, you know, it doesn't really help much. But again, advantages, but that's more of a preference of mine. A lot of people don't like the, like the easy click battery strap on the Traxxas cars because you can't run a whole bunch of different types of batteries. So there are advantages and disadvantages of both. Both cars look like so much fun to drive. Uh, in the next video, we will be driving both of them and I'll give you my impressions of both the cars. Uh, first, first impressions on the driving ability, the drivability of these cars. Let me move these out of the way so you can see these, the, uh, the rears of the cars. The Arma wheelie bar looks much more robust, a little bit beefier. The Traxxas wheelie bar looks a little bit smaller, but I'm sure it does a purpose. It's been so long since I've driven a Rustler 4x4. Uh, we'll find out what that's all about. Drive shafts look similar. Both of them have adjustable camber links and steering linkages. Uh, the Traxxas ones and the Arma ones, look, I think Arma went even bigger with their steering links. I mean, those are pretty freaking beefy. Wow, that's, that's impressive. Um, the center drive shafts, it's metal or anodized aluminum on the Rustler 4x4. The standard plastic on the Vortex. However, I'm sure that's pretty freaking sturdy. Let's see what's all in there. Right all, all up in there. I'm, I'm pretty sure this is pretty rigid and won't be a problem. Oh man, I'm so excited to drive them. Tires wise, tires look similar, but the Armas look like they sit up a little bit higher. Um, these are a lot harder. Um, these are a lot softer in regards to like the foam inside. Now this is where I feel like, I, I, at least on the Sentin, I don't know about this car, but on the Sentin, the tires wore down really fast on the Arma. Um, so I, I don't know, we'll see, we'll see if it does it on the same thing on this one. All right, so here is the bottom of the chassis. They are both plastic. Both look similar, different branding, a little darker, a little lighter. Nothing crazy out of the norm here. I will say, I, I, I forgot to mention servo wise, this does come with a plastic gear servo. That is the Rustler 4x4. The Arma does come with a metal gear servo. Now with that said, that plastic gear servo holds up in the Traxxas because the servo saver is very loose. It's very uh, plush. Doesn't put that much stress on the servo. And this one, I, you know, they're set up the same way, but it is nice to know that you have a Metal Gear servo in there. It comes with the Spectrum. What is that? I, I can't even read that, but that's the Spectrum servo, the S651. That comes with the Vortex. I have to go down and get my Sentin because I'm really curious about these, these camber links. I think this stuff in the back here, that red, I don't think that's on the Sentin, the new Sentin. And I don't know if those camber links are that beefy on the Sentin. So we're going to go get it and check it out. All right, I picked up my Sentin. Yes, we still have a Christmas tree up. Don't be hating, guys. I picked up my, or I got my Sentin from downstairs. It does, it does have that red metal back there, see? Right there. And the turnbuckles are that beefy, so they are very similar, which makes sense. This does have like a little bearing in the middle for the drive shaft, so it doesn't shake too much, but if it's, if it's anything like the testing between the Slash 4x4 and the Sentin 4x4, this one is gonna have ballistic amount of power. The only flaw I saw with the Sentin 4x4 was that it didn't have some type of like vehicle stabilization, which now just comes, sorry, I'm breathing hard guys. Ran down the garage, ran <laughs> back upstairs real quick. Now this has AVC, this one did not have AVC. Man, I'm excited to drive it. We're, we gotta go drive them. Well, I hope you liked this video guys. If you did, smash the like button. Make sure you turn on the notification bell because the very next video we're gonna be driving these things, doing a comparison, first impression on the drivability of these things, gonna be a lot of fun. We'll do a whole bunch of cool things with these. I still got to make that into the ultimate tracks wrestler. I've been super excited about that build. So like, subscribe, turn on the notification bell. You guys will see me next time. Later guys.